Yo, what is up guys, GenoSX here, and today we have our week 2 match in the ISO against Brandon, and as you can see from the uh, his team that he has a Manaphy, Megalophony, a Nidoking, a, a Fable, a Heliolisk, and a Manton, so basically from team preview, I can see that Meg Mega Metagross is going to do a lot of work, especially I have pretty much coverage for everything on his team. NT is also going to put in some work because nothing on his team except uh, Manaphy can take a Sacred Fire and that thing is going to die to a Slender Punch after it takes a Sacred Fire anyways. And Kofag is going to be our, my main role for Megalopini because that thing is scary with Scrappy. So I decided to start off with my Garchomp since it can set up rocks and it can pretty much pressure everything on his team except for Manaphy. Uh, my Garchomp L Garchomp can beat Clefable 1 on 1 because I can take a move that Snore stands up and then Earthquake unless it's unaware of course. But um, he decides to lead off with his Needle Queen and first turn I decide uh, if you watch my team builder you can see that uh, most Garchomp's leads are either Sash, uh, Stealth Shark lead or uh, Bulky. So basically what I decided to do was that I wanted to bait uh, monsters as Needle King or Manaphy in to think that I am bulky and let them attack me with a move such as Ice Beam and then instead basically just kill them with an Earthquake on the start because they would, expect, they would expect me to Stealth Rock. So that's my mentality and I did not EV my Garchomp to take a Scarf Needle King's uh, Ice Beam but I highly doubt that Needle King would be Scarf because it, uh, Scarf Needle Queen doesn't do much to my team at all. It's uh, much better running uh, Life Orb Sheer Force with Hazards. And if you look at his team, the only Hazard setting on except for Clefable is Needle Queen. And I feel like it wouldn't be Scarfed or else he would lose a very valuable Hazard setter. So that's why I decided to just straight up go for the Earthquake first turn because he probably ex expected me to Stealth Rock. And it works out for me and we managed to take out the uh, Needle Queen. So uh, he goes into Manaphy, I decided to go into my Rotom because I know I can take any hit. Uh, he decides to double into Lopini, I mean I'm fine with that, I'm Scarf, so I do have speed. Uh, I decided to both switch out of here into my Clefax straight away. Uh, he went for the Ice Punch because uh, he didn't want to risk a High Jump Kick miss, but that's way better for me. Since now we Mummify is Scrappy and he cannot High Jump Kick me. will o is definitely the safest play here even though Clefable is obvious, but I do have a Switch into uh, Clefable being Entei because uh, uh, Metagross is afraid of Flamethrower and Entei is not, so uh, I'm definitely fine with burning the Clefable even though he has Magic Guard. So I decided to just go into Entei here after he goes for the Carmine. Now, like I said, he has no switching to Sacred Fire whatsoever. His uh, best switching to it is probably uh, Manaphy, which will die to a Sunder Punch after it takes a Sacred Fire. So he goes into his man uh, Mantine here actually and if, uh, fun fact, Menton is actually the opposite of Skarmory in terms of stats, so 120 special defense and uh, pr uh, uh, mediocre physical defense, so the reason it's dropped to NU or PU, one of the two I believe, is because um, it's, uh, it's four times weakness to electric type and most electric types are special attack, so uh, it's 120 special defense is pretty much useless, so Mantine is definitely not a switching to ban the Sacred Fire from Entei because it's physical. Sacred Fire is definitely physical and it deals about 70% to the Mantine, so that was. And we definitely do outspeed with my Entei, so we managed to take out the Mantine, and that was one run that stops, up from, stops, up, stops us from spamming a Meteor Mash. So, I, like I said, I go into my Rotom, it's my initial switching to Manaphy. Uh, he can Ice Beam, but. Um, I highly doubt he was. Skull is definitely his best play of the whole time. Now, uh, what I can do here is pretty much just go for the Volt Switch, I believe. And now, this time I can go into Metagross straight away because we do outspeed with Metagross and I can hit, hit, it, hit it with a Meteor Mash and not be afraid of the Fire type move. So, I go into my Metagross here as we can pretty much just go for the Meteor Mash here. And like I said, he goes into Hero Disc, which is fine. I am. Uh, Jolly 352 speed we do miss but uh, Earthquake is just going to pick off Heliolisk because it has terrible defense anyways. He goes into Lopini. Metagross can definitely take a high jump pick unless it's a crit and Meteor Mash is def definitely going to be able to take Lopini out. If Meteor Mash missed here it will probably have been a really, really long and hard game for me from then because I don't have any reliable switch into Lopini and Metagross is one of the only things that can revenge kill it uh, reliably. So. 
We do match thankfully it does land on the Lopini and we do manage to take out the Lopini. So it goes back out into Manaphy. I don't need to switch and let my Rolling get weakened anymore. Metagross basically has done its job and I can pretty much just summon Puncher and get off as many damage as possible as he goes for a skull. Burns us, uh, pretty unfortunate, but uh, nothing I can do as I go for the Thunder Punch and take out uh, those about 33% to the Manaphy and that puts us in range of uh, Thunderbolt so I don't have to go for the Leaf Storm. So go for the Thunderbolt on the Fable, force him to Soft Boil that I can switch back into my Entei and a Sacred Fire from an Entei is definitely a 2 hit KO so I pretty much got the game secured at this point and I just go for the Sacred Fire, it does about 55% and goes for the Moon Blast to 0 and Manaphy cannot take 2 Sacred Fires and especially because of the fact that uh, I burns, I believe, yeah I do burn, uh, it does about 39% and it is revealed that he is Scarf uh, Manaphy. I decided to switch out my Entei because I don't want my, uh, I don't want him to be Scarf take him out on an Entei and let Clefable win in the end. So I went into my Hadragon knowing that I can take any hit except for Dazzling Game and if, even if he went for a Dazzling Game I can just claim it with my Rotom anyway so goes for the Scald, uh, he's probably just uh, he's gonna die to burn damage and I do have Flash Cannon on my Svex Hadragon to clean up the game right now so basically a really really quick game and I'm able to take a uh, Danny 5-0 and we are off to a very good start uh, in the league. Our next week's opponent is Santi, who also has a 2-0 league and a uh, 2-0 hasn't lost any games in the league so far, so it should be a fun game. I haven't even started prepping yet, and I really should have, but like I said, this game was really fun. Uh, some have to involved, such as a Skull Burn, but is it, I mean, if he didn't Skull Burn, I probably could have got a 6-0, but that doesn't really matter. And... There were actually quite a lot of burns in this match. I believe there were actually five burns this match. Pretty much uh, expected. Um, sorry about that. So I think that's going to be it for this uh, battle. Um, th again, this is the not the uh, this is the what do you call it the post post commentary. Um, I might do live for the next three battles, but who knows? And hope you enjoyed this episode or not episode this match, and see you next time. Peace out.